Welcome to Direction Northeast. Hello, I'm Anthony Frazier. This program is a presentation of the Mass Communications Department of Northeast State Community College and is produced by the students through the college's video production facilities. This series of programs is designed to bring you the students' perspective on events and happenings throughout Northeast Tennessee. The program and the reports within it are part of the classroom and laboratory learning process for students in broadcasting and advertising public relations part of the mass communications area. The civil rights movement of the 60s changed the world. And now a course being offered at Vanderbilt University studies how popular music, specifically swing and jazz from the 30s and 40s, rock and roll and rhythm and blues from the 1950s, and the soul music of the 60s changed segregation in the civil rights movement. Steve Buckingham, musician, producer, and record company executive, joins us to discuss this course and the record industry. We'll be back with four-time Grammy Award winner Steve Buckingham in just a moment. Northeast State's a wonderful place to start your career in college, and um, the campus is beautiful, the teachers are one-on-one. -on -one. It was an excellent decision to come to Northeast State. I've learned so much coming here. I love the school, and everyone is friendly here. This has been the best time of my life. I have really enjoyed being here. I think if it hadn't have been for Northeast, then I wouldn't feel as happy and as driven if I'd have chosen other school. Step by step, Northeast State is here to get you there. Enroll now at northeaststate.edu. I don't think like you. I don't laugh at the same jokes as you. I don't speak like you. I don't eat the food you do. I don't celebrate the same holidays as you. But I will help save your life. When you help the American Red Cross, you help America. Welcome back. Our guest Steve Buckingham began his career playing rhythm and blues in Virginia and the Carolinas. During high school and college, he played guitar behind such artists as Jackie Wilson, uh, The Impressions, Percy Sledge, and The Drifters. He produced Alicia Bridges' 1978 classic, I Love the Nightlife, and won four Grammy Awards while producing 27 number one singles, 11 gold, and 19 platinum albums. Mr. Buckingham, welcome to the show. Thanks, Anthony. Now, you've obviously worked and produced with some of the most famous and talented people in the world. And now you've chose to take on teaching. Uh, what inspired you to, to take that direction? Three years ago, Christmas, James Brown died. I was working with a young lady in Nashville, an aspiring singer-songwriter. I think she was about 22 years old when she came by my house on uh, Christmas Day. And I said, I'm going to show you some footage of James Brown in his prime. <laughs> And I did uh, the show, because I remember to this day, out of the thousands of shows I've seen because of what I do, mm -hmm. that sh the first time I saw James Brown, 64, 65, somewhere along in there, still stands out to me as the greatest show I ever saw. And I showed her footage of that era of James Brown. And she looked at and said, I didn't know anything like this existed. And it just dawned on me, you know, how would anybody know if somebody didn't tell them who was there? And how would they know about how it impacted the civil rights movement if somebody didn't tell them it was there? So one thing led to another, and um, I was asked to do a commencement address at University of Richmond, my alma mater. After that, they asked me if I'd be interested in teaching, and I said, I've got an idea. And that's how this whole thing came about. And there it was. Yeah. Um, now, tell us a little bit about the course that you're teaching. Uh, it's on segregation in the civil rights? Or what, I talk, what I talk about is I start with 1930s, Benny Goodman mm. hiring, uh, in 1935 he hired Teddy Wilson to play piano. Teddy Wilson was an African American. It would be equivalent to somebody like Green Day or U2 now ha hiring somebody from Mars <laughs> for the biggest band in the land, mm. Benny Goodman, popular with everybody, teenagers and adults alike to hire a black musician in 1935. Two years later, he hired Lionel Hampton on Vibes. Two years after that, I think it was, he hired Charlie Christian, who was one of the most influential jazz guitarists or electric guitarists in history. Mm. And that broke the color barrier. And you gotta understand, this is 12 years before Jackie Robinson broke into the big leagues. Mm. So music was ahead of sports and in integrating in a public way. Mm. 
That's interesting. Now, uh, would you say that there were any specific artists during the Civil Rights Movement that had more of an effect on the Civil sure. Rights Movement? Um, you know, I, this morning one of the professors made a point that Nat Cole, Nat King Cole in the 50s, I think was the first African American to have a television show in the 50s. Couldn't get a sponsor the second year, but he broke that barrier. But when it got into the 60s and when the Civil Rights Movement really picked up steam, there were artists like Curtis Mayfield in the Impressions writing songs like People Get Ready, We're a Winner, Moving On Up, um, If You Had a Choice of Colors. It really had an impact on the Civil Rights Movement, as did Sam Cooke's song that he wrote, uh, A Change Is Gonna Come. Mm -hmm. a big, big song with big the Civil song. Rights Movement. Uh, and then uh, um, so many of the artists like James Brown or Aretha Franklin or Ray Charles had an impact because they were reaching white teenagers as mm -hmm. well as black teenagers. Yeah. Now, on the other side of that, do you feel like there were any artists uh, who worked against the civil rights movement? Uh, any musicians or? Well, off the top of my head, I didn't run into them. I know that I was playing in bands in Virginia, in a band in Virginia, North Carolina, mm -hmm. South Carolina. We would play a lot with mixed bands where they integrated bands or we would play with black artists, everybody was aware of what was going on because we were playing during the day, I mean playing during the night, but we couldn't stay in the same hotels, we couldn't eat in the same restaurants with a lot of the same people we worked with. So we were all aware of the civil rights movement. I've, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head who was against the movement. Some people were more vocal than others, such as James Brown's especially when you moved into the era of say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud, that type of thing. But I can't think of anybody who, even if they were quiet about their support, mm -hmm. I think they were all supportive that well, I knew. I don't know if I was uh, directly meant, you know, that they were, they were intentionally trying to work against the civil rights movement or if they had just created songs maybe unintentionally that had an effect negatively. Not that negatively I, I can't think of anything offhand because so many people, again, some intentionally and some unintentionally were reaching a white audience. Mm -hmm. And it was, to me, that the inroads they were making with particularly white teenagers, mm -hmm. white middle class teenagers, did so much in changing people's minds about segregation. Right. And uh, I think in improving the environment for integration to take hold. Mm 